All right, here's the fourth thing that we need to know and that is the nemesis of loneliness is belonging. So let's talk a little bit about belonging. Some of you I'm sure are familiar with the Harvard University study of adult development. It's been going on for over 80 years. It's extraordinary that studies go on that long um, because usually they lose funding or they lose staff and they can't prop the study up. But this has been going on for over 80 years. They've now studied over 2,000 people very intimately. Every two years with these participants, they, they go in and they, they monitor their health, they scan their brains, they look at all their finances, they have interviews with all of their close social ties. So it's a very in-depth study. And here's what they've found recently talking to the, the director of this development. For 80 years, over 2,000 people, the definitive answer to a long and healthy life, this is what they found. It's not diet, it's not wealth, it's not uh, exercise, it is quality relationships. Quality relationships. So to further kind of put a, uh, to, to, to emphasize the significance of belonging, I want to introduce you to the three L's of life. Uh, when we were writing the book, we thought, how do we put the appropriate emphasis on belonging? And you, you all remember uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs? You remember that? He, he identified six needs, essentially. And in the book, we respectfully pushed back on Maslow's hierarchy of needs because he put belonging right in the middle. And we just didn't feel like that was the significant, that, that didn't put the appropriate significance on belonging because it's our belief, according to that last study, that connection, right, belonging is our greatest need as, as, a, as humans. So how can we create a model that puts the appropriate emphasis on it? So I'm going to introduce this model to you, but I'm going to do it through the lens of a story. And the story is actually uh, about this gentleman. Does anybody know who this gentleman is? I heard it over here. Chris McCandless. Uh, he is, was, the book's pr pretty old now, but he's the, he was the, uh, the origin of the book Into the Wild. I'm sure many have read that book. It became a movie a number of years ago as well. But here's Chris's story. He actually grew up in Atlanta and he uh, always wanted to just get away from society. So he eventually decided to hitchhike across the U.S. and he was just trying to find solitude. He was trying to find isolation and again get away from others. And all along his way, his goal was to get to Alaska, but he began hitchhiking. But all along the way, he had to satisfy his most basic needs, which were to live, right? He had to work odd jobs so that he could feed himself and he could find shelter. He had to, you know, satisfy his most basic needs. Well, eventually, he got to Alaska. And if any of you have been to Alaska, it is just gorgeous. And he finally got there. And his whole goal was to get as far away from humanity as possible, get off the beaten path. So he took very little supplies into the Alaskan bush and he decided to just live off the land. And really what he was trying to, trying to, to do there was uh, fulfill his, his other need of learning, right? How far could he push him? When you and I were infants, we had the need to learn the language of our, of our tribes so that we could communicate our needs. So learning and growing into our full potential is a core need of humanity. Uh, but uh, Chris actually lived in this, in this bus that you see pictured there. He actually, there was this abandoned bus in the middle of nowhere in Alaska and he lived there for six months. And then he actually ingested something that made him extremely ill and very weak. And so he knew he was fighting for his life and he was in, you know, he needed to get help immediately. So he, he began retracing his steps to try to find some help. And he came to the river that he originally had crossed, but due to some snow melt, the river had gotten really high and he was way too weak to cross that river. So dejected, he went back to the bus and it was there that he knew he was, it was his final moments of life. There wasn't anybody that was going to find him. And so in his final moments on earth, imagine this, he's, he's in the back of that bus, he's looking out on that pristine Alaskan landscape and he took to the journal that he had been writing, a, writing a, in, during his whole journey and he wrote these final words in his journal. Happiness is only real when shared. He thought his goal or what he wanted to do was to be on his own and to have, be isolated from others. But at the end of the day, all those joys that he found being by himself, they was meaningless. And in, and in his opinion, did it even exist because I didn't have someone to share it with. So what he failed to, to satisfy his most, uh, his, his most significant need, and that is to link, right, this belonging, this connection with others. And no surprise, or, or not, it's not a, a um, 
a coincidence that this model looks like a Wi-Fi icon. We're constantly connecting our technology these days. But I hope that that next time you connect your device, when you look at that model, you think of this story and you think, when was the last time I invested in a human connection? All right, so if you want a healthier, more loyal, more engaged team, deliver on humanity's most significant need, which is belonging.